making magical ring shots. And we're gonna go ahead and use the dust correction curve. And if you don't have one, we're gonna make one. Let's do this. So first, now if you have the presets, go ahead and you can just add the dust correction curve right from the start. If you don't, you're going to dial this in right now. So you're going to go to zero and zero on your shadows, all the way to 10, 100, then to zero and 20 or 20 and zero, and then 30 and 100, and then 40 and zero, and then 50 and 100. I want you to go through this and create this entire curve, ending with 90, 100, and 100 and zero. It's going to look all wonky. It's going to look crazy. You're simply going to pull the points up from a curve. So by the way, if you don't know how to do it and you're just working with that reset curve, I assume by now you would. You should, but in case. You're just going to grab that point, go all the way up to 100, and then you're going to grab this point, go all the way down to 20 and 0, and then grab another point from 30 and go all the way. And hold down Shift, by the way, if you want to constrain just to one direction. So, And then same thing, go down to 40, and then all the way down to zero. And keep doing that until you have that full dust correction curve right here. Now, when you have that, you'll save it out. Save it out so you don't have to do this every single time. So simply click plus, click check none, and then simply click the tone curve to make this your dust correction curve. Now, it's already saved out, and I've simply named it inside of my tools as 00C dust correction curve add. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just go and modify our image and when we're done, I, cre I created another curve which is just a standard S curve that boosts contrast and so I just click remove. So by adding that curve and then removing it, then we get all of our dust gone. So what we're gonna do is click add, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work the image and by the way, check this out. If you look, it's difficult to see a lot of these little flecks that the dust correction curve just completely reveals. Okay, so that's why we use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just with my spot removal tool, we're gonna to click and just remove these visible pieces of dust from the image. Okay, see it here. And over here, there's a lot of little bits and pieces here. I'm gonna just go for the kind of the bigger, more obvious ones so we don't spend forever doing this. Okay, that's almost about good. Lightroom, you make this so much fun. Oops, what was that? I just drew a big line in there. Don't you wish Lightroom could play music by itself? Sometimes I do. Nah, that's what Spotify's for. And Pandora. I like both. Okay. We're getting to it. That should be most all of it. Let's just zoom out see if there's any other big pieces. There's a couple down here. All right, I think we got most of it. So once you're done with this, go to Dust Correction Curve, Remove. Now what this does is it just creates a standard S curve. So all you gotta do now is if you don't have the presets, you just create your standard S curve. So this is my standard S curve. It's at 14 and, and 11. It's at 37.6 and 37.6, 62.7, 67.7, and 85.1 and 89, and then 00 on both sides. Save that out by clicking same thing, plus adding another preset for just a standard curve. And then you simply switch to that curve when you're done and it keeps all of your dust correction that you have applied. So very nice, very easy way of getting rid of your dust right from the beginning. So if you notice an image that has a lot of dust, I would do that before really going and doing much else to the image because if you do modify the curve or customize it, you don't have to go and redo that work beyond the standard S curve. So let's go ahead and start modifying this image now. Now what we have with this image is I took this ring shot, it's actually sitting on a chair and I used two flashes that are firing right into the ring. And then I think I had one flash that's going right onto the background. So you have two coming from, oh actually, you know, it was a, uh, they're LED lights, two against the ring on each side and then one flash against the background to kind of create this effect. It was taken at 100 of a second at F25 and ISO 200. So I imagine that I did F25 just so I could get to the level of depth of field that I needed to actually see the background. Because we're shooting on a macro lens, we have to go to a higher aperture. Even though that this isn't the ideal aperture for sharpness, we're actually gonna be reducing sharpness at that point. This was taken on the Canon macro, on the 100 millimeter macro. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tweak the, uh, the my crop real quick, just to kind of straighten this out a little bit by pressing R. What we're gonna do now is brighten up the image a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add highlights, add whites. I want this image to kind of sparkle and have that really bright, nice look to it. So I'm adding 
to the whites and highlights here. I'm also going to actually negate that uh, exposure thing because once I added in those highlights and whites, it kind of got bright enough anyway. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of blacks back just so we don't have pitch black in the in the rings. I want to make sure that the rings themselves are nice and bright. If I press J to turn on the highlight alert, this is what I'm seeing right now as far as being blown out. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't want that area to necessarily be blown. So let's just bring the white point down to maybe 20 and the highlights down to 10. And now let's balance. So now we can kind of play and balance between exposure to make sure that we're not blowing anything out. So see, now I can bring my exposure up quite a bit and we're not blowing out anything. So I'm going to go to 0.5 and then I'm going to leave it about here. 10, negative 10, 20, and negative 10. Remember that we still have contrast from our tone curve as well. But I'm going to tweak that curve just a bit to kind of pull up a little bit more mid-tone highlights, pull down a little bit in the mid-tone shadows, and a little bit in the deep shadows. That's looking nice. Let's add clarity. I'm going to use my clarity now to kind of add that mid-tone contrast back in the image. I also pressed J just to turn off the highlight alert. I'm going to go ahead and add to about plus 60. And for vibrance, I'm going to go up to plus 20 just so we get a nice pop in that blue in the background. So this is looking really nice so far. What I'm going to do now is, by the way, if you want to, this is a great image to kind of look at hue and just test things out. This is a, because in this image, we have such a great separation of color. So if I went to the background, I can actually target the blues. I could turn them more into a teal all the way down into a green, or I can go to the right side and turn them more into like a purple. So if I go and bring this up, it's going to go to this more deep purple side. And so it's kind of a fun image that you can actually use to play around on because we have such a good separation. But I, I do like the existing color, so I'm not really going to change that. I want to see just what this looks like with a little bit of toning in the highlights, just for a little bit of warmth. And in the shadows, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, that cooling effect too. So we're going to go 240 and 10. I'm going to leave it actually balanced right in the center because this isn't a shot that I need to balance towards one side or the other um, since it's just a a shot of a ring as opposed to having skin tone. What I'm going to do is dial the highlights down to five. So now we have this nice little blue tone in the shadows. Let's go ahead and bring this little point over the ring. I'm going to actually sharpen this image without zooming in. So let's sharpen all the way up to 120. I want to enhance the detail quite a bit, but I do want to increase the masking and noise reduction by a bit as well. So we kind of don't sharpen. So if I zoom in now and you kind of turn this on and off, Check this out. We're going to have a nice sharpening effect. You can see how shooting at f25 for my aperture really ends up with a kind of a soft image. Okay, but that's with it sharpened. All right, looks good. Let's go ahead and the last thing I want to do really is tweak. Let's do a little bit of dehaze on this just because I feel like it could use a little bit of that extra contrast. Okay, and then what we're going to do is use our radial filter. I'm going to go ahead and pull in a burn right from those rings. So it already has this nice natural vignette occurring in the image. I'm going to just kind of bring that out a little bit with this vignette. So I'm going to kind of reveal it more by doing a radial filter and I'm going to burn all the way down to about 0.8. And this is looking really fantastic. We do have some big pieces of uh, this little bits of hairs on this chair here. Let's see if there's any on this side. This happens all the time when you're doing macro stuff. And I'd really recommend probably if you want to get rid of it going into Photoshop. But let's take a look at the before and after so far. So here's the uh, before. This is the after. Here's the before by pressing backslash. Here's the after. We have this ring shot that really pops. We have a good amount of kind of this nice highlight on the crystals or on the ring. It's not a crystal. It's a diamond. Real diamond. My groom ain't buying no cubic zirconia, whatever it's called. Actually, I think there's other ones that are even better. Moissanite? Mo I think it's moissanite. That sounds like a weird word. Okay, what I'm going to do is do a highlight bloom detail enhancer. So again, dial this in if you don't have it. 50 and negative 5, 20 and negative 5 on blacks, clarity at 10. I'm going to paint this just over my ring. What is this going to do? It's going to reveal and kind of make those highlights really bloom. So we get this extra kick in the ring. Okay, now we do have highlights in the background. So as I'm painting it over the background, I'm going to be a little bit careful to not paint the actual background. So just kind of hold down alter option, paint it off of the background when you go around. Okay, same thing here. This is like we're preparing this to kind of go into our portfolio, which is great. I wanted to do that anyway. Not really, but whatever. Okay, so turn it on and off. Make sure that you don't have any other areas affected. So I do have a little bit of this outline area right here. So let me just go ahead and subtract it off that. Same thing over here. And now look at the effect of that. 
it looks like it just pops completely when we paint that. I'm going to go ahead and hold down Alter Option. I'm actually going to strengthen the effect to take it up a bit. Let's take it up. Let's take it up pretty high. I'm actually taking it up almost double the strength. Just make sure that we're not affecting the background because we don't want the background to look like it's being changed. And if you want to, you could actually zoom in and get really detailed in here. Hold down Alter Option to bring up your eraser. Turn on the auto mask and then erase out of the inside of this. And it'll actually do a fairly decent job since there's such a good amount of contrast around the ring. So we can kind of go and apply it in these sections so we get a more authentic kind of look. What I would do is kind of reduce the strength and opacity of this once you've done it, just a little bit. Okay, so it looks pretty decent. Paint it into here. Just decrease the size of the brush a little bit and then kind of paint it into the area that you want it removed. And then hold down Alter Option and just kind of Pull it back a little so that the difference between the uh, where it's painted where it's not is not as significant. We'll just pull it back to like 55. And that looks awesome. Take a look at this now. Look at this. Look at the way that that pops. And our background is still retained. That looks fantastic. Okay, so now let's just use our spot removal tool. And let's use a small kind of uh, brush and just paint around this hair. See if we can do, I'm, I'm thinking that we could probably do a decent job of removing it in Lightroom. Although this is not very... Uh, time effective okay and where the crap did that sample from over there let's see if it did a good job yeah not bad I'll accept that let's do that right here okay again you can see how it lags a little bit when we do this kind of stuff inside of Lightroom not a big deal if you're only doing a little bit of it but definitely for you know if you're gonna be spending some time on this it's worth going into Photoshop anyway and if we need to blow this up Honestly, we need to go into Photoshop anyway, because when you zoom into the ring itself, you'll notice that we have reflections of those dust and bits and scratches on the ring and things like that that I'd want to retouch anyway. But let's just say we're prepping this for web, and so these things aren't too big of a deal. Okay, I'm going to just get that guy out. That looks great. Okay, let's take a look at our final before and after, and we can see this ring really just popping and shining. That looks so cool. So how do you get your rings to pop? Well, you add a little bit of light in the production of it, and then you can add that highlight bloom in the post to really make those details sing. That's it for this tutorial. Let's go on to the next one.